and to every country in the Europe, virtually every country in the European Union for one simple reason. In the spring of 1992, when the war started in Bosnia, on what's now the territory of the Republic of Srpska, there was a Muslim plurality, as you yourself know. 46%, according to the census, 46% of the population was Muslim, 42% Serb. There are Croats in Pasavina, a few other places, but essentially it was a Muslim plurality. The only reason that a referendum today in the Republic of Srpska would in all likelihood get a majority for separation or, or whatever is because of genocide and ethnic cleansing. It's inconceivable that the international community would allow that. Forget about Dayton. Dayton's a flawed agreement. Everybody knows that. But that simple fact, you cannot allow a referendum because the, after the electorate has been murdered and ethnically cleansed. That's not going to happen. I mean, I don't know too many issues that would unite disparate f uh, factions, certainly in the U.S. Congress and in this town, than that. Uh, there will be people who'd want to do it. I have no doubt about it at all. But I, I don't see that happening. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Ashley Fisher. I'm a student at the American University. Um, I understand that independence comes with supervision, but I'm curious if there's any long-term plans for ethnic reconciliation, or is that even feasible, like specific kind of plans? Maybe I can take that on since we I spent a lot of time attempting reconciliation uh, uh, between uh, Albanians and Serbs in Kosovo. Uh, there's a lot of bad blood between these folks and a long history, not so much of violent conflict, but of uh, living separate parallel lives. Uh, it, uh, you know, there are parts of the world in which that happens with people living side by side, but really not interacting very much and because Serbian and Albanian are mutually incomprehensible languages. It, reconciliation becomes more and more difficult as time goes by. Seventy percent of the population under 30 years old, none of whom, with some few exceptions of rather educated people, will speak Serbian any longer because it's not taught in the schools to the Albanians. Serbs, uh, though there are some who speak Albanian in some parts of Kosovo, it's it's relatively rare. So and they were kept out of the schools. <coughs> and where they would have right. learned it. It's been a long time since Albanians were 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 learning Serbian. In fact, uh, one of my proposals, not tongue in cheek, but really quite serious, is that if you want reconciliation and reintegration in Kosovo, what you got to do is offer education in English from kindergarten through twelfth grade. And everybody who could possibly get their kids into those English-speaking schools, Albanians and Serbs, would do it. Because speaking English is so valuable economically, you would want your kids to do it. I've been in rooms very shortly after the war with both Serbs and Albanians. I think there was there were actually some very real possibilities of uh, better relations. Uh, I would say that the peak of those possibilities was maybe three or four years after the war. Uh, two things happened. Belgrade intervened pretty vigorously to stop that. They didn't want to see it happening. Uh, they knew that that was not good for their perspective. They wanted the Serbs not participating in Kosovo's institutions. And then the riots of March 2004 were devastating to the prospects for reconciliation. I nevertheless continue to believe that um, with clarity about Kosovo's status that you will see some degree of reconciliation. In fact, I know quite a few Serbs who not only are committed to it, but who travel freely uh, and speak Serbian throughout Kosovo. Now, this is not something believed to be possible in Belgrade, but it is not only possible, it is done every day uh, by people who are committed to working with the Albanians and not against them. 
I have to say your idea about English as a language of instruction has already been tried next door uh, in Macedonia. You probably know. Yeah, the Southeastern European University in Tetova, I mean, as we all know, the uh, Albanians constitute about 30 percent of the population in Macedonia and they're not exactly on great terms with the with the Slavic Macedonians uh, but there is a new university there and from what I understand the language of instruction is English and it's a great idea I've heard the same idea I mean that, that I'm told at the other end of Europe that um, r ethnic Russian and ethnic Estonian teenagers when they get together in Tallinn speak Russian uh, speak English speak English and and they all use the internet and you know it, it's the whole youth culture so uh, you know there may be a good thing to having English as the big language yes sir you're next uh, my name is John Bosnich I'm the uh, president of the Serbian Unity Congress chapter here in Washington but I'm not speaking uh, on that uh, in that capacity but more so as a journalist who spent eight years in the Balkans and was there through the entire conflict in Kosovo. Um, I'd like to start out by saying that I'm here today because my life was saved by an Albanian. I belong to a family that has intermarried with Albanians and my father-in-law was, he's, uh, my late father-in-law, was an excellent speaker of Albanian and had had excellent relations with Albanians, with Albanians who didn't feel that they had to kill their Serbian neighbors, who were the, min who were the majority before this whole conflict broke out. Um, being in the basement, I think it's a good time for me to make the analogy to Alice in Wonderland. We've definitely gone deep down the rabbit hole here tonight with a couple of the comments. And uh, if I may, I'd like to address them and then come up with a question. Um, the, the whole concept that uh, Mr. Server just spoke about, about non-interaction between Serbian and Albanian communities, of course, is false. There have been Serbs living there on friendly neighborly terms with Albanians for centuries. Centuries, without a single conflict between them. There are families like my own which are intermarried with Albanians and which have cousins who are Albanians and no problem among them. This is a concept which, has, which is propaganda. It has been propagated to the nth degree here in America because people haven't been there to see it with their own eyes. Um, the idea that Belgrade intervened is also false. Belgrade intervened to stop the creation of independence-based structures, not to stop the interaction of Albanians with Serbs. Albanians constituted a major proportion of the police force, the Serbian police force in the area. Um, the idea of standards before status being an original plan and, and being changed, well, it was changed. The standards before status program was changed by the West when it simply realized that it would not be able to enforce those demands on their clients. And the reason why I refer to the Albanian extremists as clients is because we all know, but which nobody has mentioned here tonight, the KLA was trained by U.S. mercenary services. It's public information. Why don't we discuss that? Until 1996, 97, 98, there was no violence going on in Kosovo. It was being led by a pacifist, well-educated, president of the Penn Club. But then the CIA intervened and then the United States intervened by training Agim Chegu, sending him to Croatia to get battle action and sending him down at the head of a bunch of terrorists who were armed and supported from here in the United States and armed with drug money as we all know and handle the go to any country in Europe and see who's handling the heroin trade. Speak to them in Albanian and you'll have a good conversation. Now, all of this, this suggestion that America is trying its best, false. This is an agenda, and the idea that uh, the idea that we that that uh, I, I want to talk about just for a second, respond to Mr. Bugajski's comments. Mr. Bugajski, it's always every time we have a meeting, it's Bugajski's bogeyman, Russia. No matter, I've never heard a positive comment about that country from you. Uh, please surprise me at one of these meetings. Kosovo may be useful for Russia, but only in response to its having been useful for America. That's the fact. Could Russia we, wasn't in Kosovo could first. Get, could we get to the question? Yeah, here we go. So standards before status, we gave up on it. We said, go ahead, go for your status. Then we had referendum. We asked, you mentioned yourself, sir, 
that you couldn't understand why Serbia wasn't running its referendum down in Kosovo. 